welcome to Everything Economics. We study microeconomics, macroeconomics, and every other type of economics here. Welcome back everyone. This is part two of the chapter, the monetary system. So in the first part, we discussed uh, the characteristics or functions of money. In this one, we will discuss the history of money. Now that you know uh, what money is, you should be able to understand its history as well. So let's get on with it. The history of money. First, there was barter. A barter system is an old method of exchange. This system has been used for centuries and long before money was invented. People exchanged services and goods for other services and goods in return. For example, person A has two chickens but wants to get some apples. Meanwhile, person B has a bushel of apples but wants some chickens. If the two can find each other, person A might trade one of his chickens for a half bushel of person B's apples. So this is a simple exchange of goods and services. Uh, before there was no cash, there were, there were uh, no coins. So what people used to do is they used to exchange goods and services. So if one person Person A, for example, in this case, if he has chickens and person B, he's the producer of, uh, producer of apples, the only way he can purchase chickens is by giving up some of his apples because he doesn't have anything else which he can uh, use as money. Or if, he, uh, if that person doesn't have apples and he has oranges, he can trade oranges for chicken. Similarly, if there, there are two other people and uh, one is, uh, is the producer of uh, clothes, another is the producer of shoes. So if that person, the one with the sh uh, uh, clothes, he wants shoes, he will have to exchange maybe a couple of his shirts for one pair of shoes. That's how the barter system works. Now we are not uh, going into uh, into the problems of the system because uh, you know if for example this guy he wants to purchase chicken right or in this case there is also a cow uh, here and uh, well if he goes to this person and he says no I don't need apples then the guy is struck then this guy will not be able to purchase chicken because the other guy doesn't want apples so this means that there was no coincidence of wants this is just one of the problems other problems also cropped up like how to measure uh, the goods and services I mean how many apples x apples equal to y chicken how many it was difficult. So for example, one chicken is equal to 10 apples or one chicken is equal to 15 apples. What is the equation? How, how, to, how, how would they exchange? There were a lot of problems. But anyway, this was the first system uh, used uh, as money. So there, uh, this is called barter system. When goods and services are exchanged. And uh, this is even practiced today in some parts of the world. I mean, uh, even in case, cases of trade, people practice this as well and even individuals and in sometimes practice this as well like for example uh, you give your cell phone to another person and that person in return gives you maybe a laptop that is also kind of a barter there is uh, no other thing involved but goods being exchanged and in interna international trade it's still practice so th this was the first system uh, used to exchange goods and services now let's move on to uh, the second one, which was the commodity money. So first there was barter and then we had commodity money. This money takes the form of a commodity with intrinsic value. For example, gold, silver, cigarettes. Ignore the cigarettes right now because we will discuss them in detail in some time. So let's discuss gold and silver. After barter, uh, barter system, 
there was uh, the system which was used uh, in which gold and silver <clears throat> were used to purchase goods and services so you would go to a shop give uh, a silver coin or a gold coin in return for goods and services so this was uh, used for a lot of centuries and this system prevailed throughout the world where silver and gold which have their own value intrinsic value they were used to purchase goods and services so commodity money takes the form of a commodity with intrinsic value which means that uh, the goods the commodity which is being used as money they, it has its own value in this case there is gold and silver all right how about cigarettes this is an interesting case uh, where in german prisoner of prisoner of uh, war camp during world war 2 cigarettes began to circulate as money so the, uh, this this means that cigarettes were being used as a medium of exchange it was being used as money so cigarettes as a unit uh, cigarettes were being also used as a unit of account that is prices began to be quoted in cigarettes it costed 80 cigarettes to buy a shirt or two cigarettes to get a shirt laundered cigarettes began began to be used as a store of value you know medium of exchange unit of account and now store of value these are the three functions of money that we discussed in the first part so cigarettes satisfied all of these three qualities during uh, the german prisoner of war camp uh, during world war 2 so in the case of store of value uh, people i don't know why this always goes back people would hoard cigarettes as a kind of savings and spend them whenever they needed to buy something so in uh, in uh, in the war camp prisoner of war camp there used to be prisoners and uh, they didn't have money so how would they exchange goods and services they start trading it with cigarette so if one prisoner has like a lot of cigarettes he would give it to another prisoner and in return he would get something which he needed uh, for example a shirt and uh, <clears throat> uh, in this case 80 cigarettes would buy a shirt or two cigarettes would buy him shirt laundered so money was being used as a medium of exchange that is uh, sorry cigarettes were being used as a medium of exchange because cigarettes were used to purchase other stuff cigarette was being used as a unit of account you could uh, measure the value of other goods based on cigarettes in this case a shirt equal to 80 cigarettes and cigarettes were also being used as a store of value that is people could store cigarettes to purchase stuffs later on to purchase goods and services later on or spend spend uh, cigarettes later on so cigarettes were uh, satisfying these three functions of money so so that is an interesting case uh, and uh, cigarettes are also a commodity with its intrinsic value so in this way uh, the second phase of money the, in the history of money was commodity money and uh, i hope you understand it if you don't if you don't then you can simply ask me a question in the comment section all right so let's move on to the third one third one is the present period the current period there was fiat money or fiat money i would call it fiat anyway used as money because of government decree fiat money is a currency established as money often by government regulation that does not have intrinsic value so fiat money like the money that is used today it is backed by the government so government uh, says that i am responsible for this money so a dollar uh, paper or any other paper that is cash it does not have its own value i mean the way gold used to have its own value or silver used to have its own value cash does not have its own value paper money uh, does not have its own value how does it get the value value is because the government assures that i am responsible for the value of this paper money 
So fiat money is a currency which is established as money often by a government regulation. Government is responsible. That does not have intrinsic value. So paper money does not have intrinsic value, but the government gives, gives it value by saying that I'm responsible. And if someone does not accept uh, this cash, this paper money, I will catch that person. That's what the government says. It, it's against the law if someone does not, does not accept this paper money. Fiat money does not have use value and has value only because the government maintains its value or because parties engaging in exchange agree on its value. Uh, it's like I, I've already told you that it does not have its own value. It, it has value because the government says that it has value. And uh, the, the people who accept it as money, they agree. Uh, uh, they agree because the government has told them that they they must agree to it so uh, the examples are coins currency check deposits and uh, uh, things like this but now things are moving fast we are getting other kinds of money as well uh, it's not part of this lecture but we have bitcoin right now which is an interesting case of money and uh, we will most likely uh, study about it in some advanced course but the question is, uh, to make it more simple, uh, let's talk about the dollar bill. Why is that dollar bill uh, in your pocket worth anything? So take it out and look at it. To the left of the portrait of George Washington, the dollar proclaims, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So it's a legal tender. It's backed by the government. And if someone does not accept it, then the government can, can take action against that entity or a person. So fiat money is money that doesn't have its own value. It's It gets its value because the government backs it. The government says, okay, we are responsible for this. So we have, uh, this is the final phase the, uh, in the history of money. Uh, we had the first one where there was a barter system. Then we had commodity money and finally fiat money. That's all in this part of the lecture. In the first one, we discussed the functions of money. In the second, uh, like uh, this one, we discussed the history of money. And uh, uh, if you have any question, any question at all uh, regarding this part, you can simply put that in the comment section and I will definitely answer. See you next time. Take care. Bye.